Hi everyone, this is Natalie. Uh, my project involved looking at green goop in a ditch and uh, amongst other things I found these amazing little creatures called hydra and here's one and they're relatives of sea anemones and corals and jellyfish. Um, they're quite small, this one's only about a centimeter and you find them just about anywhere there's fresh water so they're really common but you may not have ever noticed them. So here's one under my microscope. It's just a basic amateur light microscope and a few drops of water. And here he is magnified uh, with some algae and some other critters. Um, so you can see his tentacles there uh, that surround his head. And he has a ma what they call a mouth at the very end. But um, hydras are really simple animals. They have just two layers of tissue. One. Um, surrounds their gastric cavity, which their mouth opens up into, and the other just covers the entire body. Um, when they close this mouth, they can use fluid pressure to extend their body, like you see them doing here, and they can extend their body and their tentacles a really, really long ways to help them catch prey. Here's the mouth opening, zoomed in a bit there, and since there's only one opening, um, food goes in and waste has to come out the same way as you can see right there so what instantly strikes you when you look at these guys are these big old cells that uh, line their tentacles these are stinging cells they have a, a few different types of them i'm going to be focusing on these big ones here that you can see sort of protruding from the tentacle they cover their bodies too this is these are those same cells just embedded in uh, their body lining. So here they are in some more detail. You can see they're just everywhere. Uh, you might notice those little hair-like projections sticking out. So we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail here. This is an undischarged stenotiel. This is one of the most complex cellular weapons we know about. And when it fires, um, basically an arrowhead accelerates out of it at about 5 million Gs, which is crazy. So this organelle in orange is a collagenous capsule, and it's anchored into the tentacle by a mesh of microtubules. The purple thing is going to become an arrowhead, and there's a green, it, what's shown in green is a coiled microtubule, whose purpose we'll get to uh, later. The um, red uh, appendage there is basically a trigger. It's uh, made rigid by actin filaments and when it's moved it opens a channel through which ions can flow which triggers the discharge of the cell. Here's what they look like after they've been fired. You can see that tubule is actually attached to the point of what you might call the harpoon um, which confused me initially. Uh, so what's the point? Uh, here's an unsuspecting little tiny freshwater crustacean called a cyclops and uh, if he gets a little too close boom <laughs> uh, probably hundreds of those stenotiles and other stinging cells fire and you can actually see a stenotiel sticking out of uh, the body of this crustacean who's been paralyzed so the way that these things work is really cool um, before they're fired, there's this tension from that collagenous material, but there's also a bunch of osmotic pressure that's built up, like 150 atmospheres of pressure inside there. So when they're triggered, this arrowhead sort of pops out and it punctures the body wall of the prey. And then the arrowhead and the tubule are going to be turned inside out by that fluid pressure. And you can see the arrowhead becomes barbs that anchor it to the hole that it made, and that tubule is getting uh, shoved inside the body of the prey as it, as it is turned inside out. And all the fluid in the capsule is being injected into the victim through the syringe needle tubule there. And it's a cocktail of proteins that are meant to inflict all kinds of damage. Um, but if you're a big human, you don't need to worry if you were to get brush up against one of these things and it fired some of its stenotils, you wouldn't even notice. Back to our poor little copepod here, you can see that the hydra has started to wrap his tentacles 
around him and um, his mouth has opened and here it is in accelerated motion. You can see that mouth opening stretches to like an unlikely degree as he <laughs> swallows the copepod in the most difficult way possible. And there he is. And that's a meal. So he'll digest that for uh, hours. That'll keep him happy for a while. And this is just shortly afterwards. You can see that's the red eye of the Cyclops inside the gastric cavity of the Hydra, which is pretty rad. So that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching.